Now, before I go any deeper in this, I want to say that Mary is just a woman. And she was highly favored and she was blessed by God, but she's just a woman. And there are a lot of things that we can learn from her. And here are two of the things that she and Joseph both got wrong. You made it. You found one bad podcast. Bad. 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 Who's bad? I suppose that would be me, Scott Heron. Bad. Bad. Duh. From the deep south. And I mean really deep south. Go far south, you have to pipe in sunshine. All right, then, let's get to it. That's right. Ah! Hello, everybody. My name is Scott Heron, and it's so good to see you today. You know, I was talking with one of my friends about this podcast, and I wanted to figure out what to name it. And he says, you should name it Mary Didn't You Know. <laughs> and that would be good, but people probably would, would assume that it's a Christmas podcast, and it's not. It's about two mistakes that Mary made. Just flat, simple. Two things that she got wrong. And... I know that sounds controversial when you start talking about Mary, but I want you to bear with me and get with me to the end of this. I think it's going to make good sense to you. We're going to hit the ground running by just looking at the boy Jesus. And this is found in Luke chapter two. I'm going to read this to you real quick, and then it's going to make a lot of sense to you. Starting with verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he became 12, 12 years old, wow, what a tough age for a lot of kids, right? They went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning, after spending the number of full days, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents were unaware of it, but supposed him to be with them in the caravan. And they went a day's journey. And they began looking for him among the relatives and friends. But when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him there. Then after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had had to be in my father's house? Oh, it's a good passage of scripture, 12 years old. Uh, Side note, I find it very interesting that one of the first things Jesus ever said that we know about in scripture is, mom and dad, don't you understand? (laughs) How many teenagers have looked at their parents and said, you guys just don't get it. Let's look at this trip to Jerusalem for Jesus. What a trip. This would be the equivalent of our kids now going to Disney World or going on a trip that they planned. It's, it's, It's just almost unfathomable that we're going to be able to see these things with our eyes and it's going to be so great, so amazing. And of all the places in Jerusalem that Jesus would want to see, it would be the temple. It would be his father's house. I fully believe that by this time in Jesus's life, he was already figuring out exactly who he was, already knew what his business was and and had his business laid out before him in his earthly ministry. And he was beginning to put these things together. So I can just imagine Jesus standing at the temple and him being transfixed by the blood-stained altar and watching, you know, with troubled eyes as he saw the sacrifice laying there and the smoke as it rise up in the, as, as it would rise up into the air. Can, can you imagine what Jesus felt as he began to put all these things together in his heart? Now, we know that the the scripture would stir the soul of Jesus. We know that his heart was moved by the scripture, and we understand that. But let's look at what scripture he had. He had Old Testament writings of the prophets. That's what his scripture was. So I can imagine him as he did ask questions, and they asked him questions, and, and as he began to take apart these scripture passages, like Isaiah 53, 7, where it says, that the, the, the Messiah would be brought as a lamb to a slaughter. Or, or Psalm twenty two sixteen that would say that my hands and my feet would be pierced. Can you imagine as Jesus began to peel these layers back off these scripture like an onion and get to the core of what it meant and, and what it meant to him in his heart. And as he would talk about it and these people would see his passion and I can imagine the things that they would learn from him. And then we look at the first of the things that I want to discuss that Mary and Joseph got wrong. They misplaced him and they went to find him. After three days, they found him in the temple. 
Now, I, I, I can't wrap my mind around it taking three days for them to realize the importance of this place in his life. And, and I, you know, I was talking with someone just a minute ago and, and they said, well, you know, they probably went for a day and then they camped overnight and then took a day to go back and then went to the temple and found him. But the scripture says this, the scripture says in verse 46, was well, verse 45, when they did not find him among themselves in the camp, then they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. Verse 46, then after three days, they found him in the temple. So it says after they returned to Jerusalem, after three days, they found him there. And then Jesus even said in verse 49, it says, well, did you not know where I would be? Did you not know for three days? Did it take you that long? So even his response reflects the fact that it took them a long time. They didn't know where he was and they were kind of getting on him. So why are you treating us this way? What are you thinking, Jesus? And his response was, did, did you not know? And of course, it says that he was obedient. And he left and went home with them, but they didn't understand. The Bible is very clear. They did not understand. So he had been sleeping, eating. He had been spending all of his time in the temple for three days before they found him. Why it took three days for them to find him in the temple will, I guess, forever be a mystery to me. I would have thought that Mary and all the things that she knew, and the Bible says that she pondered in her heart, would have made a beeline for that temple, but she did not. She eventually went, but it took her three days to figure it out. And then we have the second thing that I want to show you that Mary and Joseph got wrong. They it, were kind of backtracking a little bit, but listen to this and, and listen carefully. We can learn. They went a whole day's journey before they missed him. They assumed that he was with everyone else, that he was with family, friends, and the caravan. They make these assumptions. And you know what making an assumption does, right? They assumed these things and they were wrong. At the end of the day, when it was time for him to go to bed, he wasn't there. So that's when they realized what's going on. Folks, how many times do we get so busy in our life that we wake up in the morning and we're running late. We slam our hand on that alarm and we turn it off and we get up and we're rushing and we're trying to get presentable and we get dressed and, and we grab a, a breakfast and we're eating as, as we're shaving and, and, and doing the things we need to do and ladies are putting on makeup and, and we're rushing to get out the door and we get into our car and we zoom to work and we get out of work and we do that and we do all the things we have to do dealing with people and bosses and, and, and people that we work with, work for, work under us all these different things. And, and then we get back in the car and we zoom back home and then we have to rush to make something for dinner and then we eat and then we get dressed for, for bed. We take a shower, we get cleaned up, we get dressed for bed and we go to bed and we're exhausted and we lay there in the dark, not realizing we've taken the entire day. We've got, gotten all the way to bedtime and we've not seen Jesus. We've not considered what he's trying to do with our day. We're not sure what it is that he wanted us to accomplish. Maybe he had a goal or plan for our day that we miss. Maybe we just completely don't even think about him at all and we go to sleep and we finish our day without even saying a prayer. How tragic is that? Mary and Joseph went a whole day without Jesus. They missed him. They made assumptions and they were wrong. And we do it all the time. At least I catch myself doing it, folks. Let's be honest. We can learn from this. We should never go a day without Jesus. There was this concert pianist and he was famous and I cannot tell you what his name was. It's a long word that I can't say, so I'm not even gonna try. But he is quoted as saying this, I can go one day without practice and I feel it, I notice it. I can go one week without practice and my, my conductor, as I'm trying to keep up with the orchestra, he notices it. But if I go a month without practice, everyone notices. There are people that are watching us, folks. And I can go without Jesus and I feel it in my heart. But there are other people that when I go without Jesus that are watching me and they're wanting to see Jesus in my life and they don't see him there. And it's because I'm not spending time with him. I'm not actively walking with him in my journey. He's not by my side. I assume that he's in the church house or I assume that he's over there with that preacher or they, you know, he's doing this and doing that, folks. He wants to be with me. He wants to be with you. And I don't want us to get distracted by all the things around us that we miss spending our day with Jesus. Side note, and this is the last and final one. If Mary were able to open her mouth and speak to us today, what would she say? How would she react if we looked at her and said, oh, Mary, it's you. You know what she would say? 
she would look at us and she would say, don't be distracted by me. Quit looking at me. Look at my son. She would say to us, I'm just a woman, but Jesus, my son, is God.